Let's take a look at the design verification model for the reaction timer. This is the version that's implemented on the desktop. So what we have on the front panel, this would be the main user interface with the light stripe and the numerical displays and the push buttons. Over here, I have internal signals brought to the front panel that can be useful for debugging purposes. Let me first take just a quick scroll to the bottom and then back up to the top to kind of just see what we're dealing with here. Each one of these while loops implements one or more major data path structures. To begin with, we have the state machine, which serves as a system controller for the uh, entire device. The button handler will ultimately have switch debouncing on the FPGA, but for now, those are just direct connects to the global variables. Here we see the random interval timer composed of two major components. These three separate while loops are what I'm collectively calling the light pattern generator. I have them in three loops because they operate at different speeds. The display mux, the millisecond timer, and then I collect all of the indicators in their own loop just to make it easier to find where the front panel indicators are located. Now the global variables communicate signals between the loops. This single VI then contains all of the global variables that are necessary. Also, I I use a specific naming convention here where I put the source of the signal first, followed by the colon, and then the signal name. You'll notice this makes it very convenient to be able to find related signals of interest. If you wanted to make another one of these, simply copy the global variable, pick a different signal name, and then you can also change it to uh, write mode instead of read mode. So again, on the FPGA, the, the global variables uh, essentially look like wires that connect the various system components together. So for example, we can scroll down a bit and find where the clear timer signal connects into this uh, multiplexer inside the millisecond timer. And again, I collect all of the signals that I want to display on the front panel in a single loop. That just makes them easier to find. So these can all be considered diagnostic signals showing the controller state and controller uh, control signals and condition signals. You see that we are in the idle state right now. And uh, begin by press pressing and holding the push button down. So we're waiting for the button release. The controller is activating the clear timer signal. And this indicates that the button is in fact being pressed down. So I'll release the button and you see that we jump to that state. All right, so we can follow the state machine controller through its paces. Back to the idle state again. Here I'm demonstrating that if you keep pressing the button, it just forces you to stay in that wait state. So here I have a reaction time that's been recorded as the best time so far. Pressing the reset button sends the recorded best time back to the maximum value. 